Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Ethical Consumer Podcast. I'm your host, Julia, and joining me today is Pallavi Pandey from Detox Eco-Friendly Disposable Tableware. And I'm going to let her tell you about this because I'm not going to be able to do it justice. These are so cool. They're so beautiful, so innovative. But as I understand from hearing a little bit about her story before, this is something that other countries have used for centuries. This is something that we are just not as familiar with in the U.S. anymore. So, Balavi, tell me about detox plates. Thank you very much, first of all, Julia, for having me here today. And I am equally excited to talk to your audience and just uh, advocate and educate people about my company. So I'm thankful again. And I am Pallavi Pandey. I am a woman of color, and I'm a mompreneur from Portland, Oregon. I am a proud owner of Detox, which is my company that I started two years ago. And I make compostable, microwave-safe tableware from naturally fallen palm leaves. So these are leaves that actually just are on the floor. We pick them up, they go through a process, and are converted into these tableware, like plates and bowls, for example. So from the farm to the table very elegantly, and I'm a mom of two young daughters. They are eight and a half and six and a half years old, and they are the brand ambassadors, and they are paid in hugs and candies for <laughs> detox, so they are my models, and they love to advocate even more passionately than I am. I used to think I'm a passionate entrepreneur, I'm a passionate mom, but they are much more than me, and when I look at them, that is my reward at the end of the day that I feel very, very proud of, and... Mm-hmm. I started Detox with three things in mind, and those are sustainability, community, and usability. So Detox is a hallmark of a greener lifestyle, elegant, sturdy, and affordable solution to a plastic free uh, to a plastic world that we're trying to get rid of. It's beautiful. And these are so wonderful. You guys have to go check out the website Detox, that is D-T-O-C-S dot com. And you can also find them under Detox, again, D-T-O-C-S plates, Detox plates on Instagram. They are beautiful. It almost, the leaves when they dry almost have a wood grain like pattern. I mean, you are eating off of a gigantic palm leaf and we'll get to that a little bit later. But as far as, you know, disposable tableware goes you have the red solo cups or the red solo bowls you have the paper plates you have the plastic plates and they're not attractive like you said they very elegantly go from farm to table and it's a beautiful presentation it's not just the convenience of having something disposable there this is such a cool idea i'm really excited to be able to elevate your voice too thank you and we try to incorporate both the aspects the aesthetic aspect of like making them very boho looking, very uh, elegant, very rustic, just to give them that feel of wood and the texture. Because people love bamboo, right? We have so many bamboo followers. But then this is one-tenth the price of bamboo, so that's the beauty. And we also try to keep it very organic, very raw, by not coating them with any chemicals or any toxins. So they are very natural and raw leaves. And especially when you are recycling them or, let's say, composting them, it's faster, it's sooner. Why? Because they don't have any kind of coating on them. So, for example, talking about the red cups that you mentioned, they are PLAs, they are plastic. So the word compostable, yes, they could be, but what I'm talking about is 50 years or 100 years perhaps. So that's the tricky word that people need to understand, the, di- the difference between backyard composting and several years of composting. So, yeah, we try our best. We put in a lot of uh, love to curate these products. And I think that really shows through just your presentation, your excitement and your passion for them too, the way you talk about them and the way you talk about your daughters too, being your brand ambassadors that keep paid in candy and hugs. I want to get paid in candy and hugs. I guess candy and hugs don't pay my mortgage, but I mean, they're really nice. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes. I mean, uh, it's, it's beautiful how they, you'll be surprised. Like, uh, one year ago when the orders were handful or two years ago, we used to hand pack each order and they used to do creative cards and the thank you notes for each customer for every order, every box they used to do it. They don't do it anymore because now the orders have, of course, significantly increased and we've outsourced it to a logistics center. But we still but we still have the printed card that goes out as a thank you note and telling our picture, our story, that how grateful we are to people to... Uh, experiencing these every day in their lives that's the sweetest story and you're raising them from such a young age to have this appreciation of 
being an entrepreneur, seeing a female owned business, seeing someone that looks like them as a person of color, of course, as your mom is going to have a business and see that that is possible for them, which oftentimes I, I think is, is a child. I know when I was a little kid, I didn't really see myself running a business when I was older. And I don't, I, I don't think that's quite my personal style, but even so, I don't know if I really recognize that it was possible just because that's not, that's really not the age that I grew up in. Now I think we are putting women and people of color and those who we are not currently seeing in the spotlight, in the spotlight. So now those little kids get to see people up there that look like them, that act like them, that sound like them. And they're like, that could be me one day. And I just got goosebumps because it's such a beautiful thing. So, ugh, so, so sweet. And your daughters and your pictures, you can tell they're just so excited about it and they get to help mom, I'm sure, which they're hopefully oh. still excited about. They're still young enough that they get excited to help mom. Thank you so much. And I think at the end of the day, the, your biggest contribution in the world could be not what you're doing, but who you're raising. So I want to make sure I'm doing my best at it. Yes, not what you're doing, but who you're raising. That's such a beautiful thing. Oh, I love it. Mother's love is something that is just completely untouched. It's actually my mom's birthday today when we're recording this. Happy we're birthday! recording this on February 23rd. Yes, so happy birthday to my mom, who's a beautiful, wonderful human being as well. So you mentioned that you are currently based in Portland, Oregon, but that is not where you are originally from, and part of the origin story of detox plates and tableware has to do with where you are from would you like to talk about that a little bit yes please i would love to so i you can see that my family uh, they live in a very small town in the himalayan mountains in india some from the very northern part from india and nature is a big part of our heritage and i remember when i was a child we used to visit the southern part of india which is lavish and coastal lines there are beaches there are palm trees and every time we had a meal over there it was lavish it was served to us on banana leaves and it was grand and i loved those um, i loved those memories and thinking back about it that wow what an experience that was and it was like so organic eating on leaves and the food even tasted better so uh, i remember that nostalgic feeling and i was like how can i bring this concept to the western world what can i do and we were also taught to be closer to nature with these ways of um, incorporating them in our lives so i was like oh, how can I start this? What can I do to bring this experience to my daughters who were born here? And that is what my motivation was to start Detox uh, two years ago and bring the concept to the Western world. So again, Detox is uh, it's a tableware that is made from naturally fallen palm leaves. They're chemical-free, plastic-free. They're compostable 100%, which means in four to six weeks, they break down on their own, like backyard composting. You can literally toss them in the backyard. And they are basically to beat the single-use disposables like plastics or paper products, so just a better alternative. And we employ a majority female workforce back in India, and a part of our proceeds, they go towards the, uh, like our sales, a part of our sales go towards the education of the children back in India, the poor, the poor uh, local communities back in India. So they are made with this focus of that giving back to the community. That was an important part of me, that wanted to teach my kids, like what you said, kids see you and they learn a lot. So that is where I thought, if you have to lead by example, you need to make an impact and you need, you need to show them that it can be done with the right team, right resources, right business model. So that is one of our biggest uh, giving back to the community back there, employing people, paying for their children education. And at the end, it's it's just a great fit uh, for our mission. And um, we just try to put all the love they, that they make these products with the quality that they uh, put the products in because they at the end feel like it's their business so they own it and I keep telling them that it's just not me who's making an impact it's them as well putting uh, all their hard work in these products and making an impact in the world and it's a group effort it's not just you it's a group effort you may be the one spearheading the entire operation but it is a community effort which is such a beautiful thing to know as well how yep. special it is that you get to have plates that you've innovated, maybe not crafted yourself, but I'm assuming you are a very big part in the crafting process. How special that is to be able to 
show that to your daughters to hear that are maybe not growing up in India. Is that still common practice for certain banquets, certain functions to be where the food would be served on? It was banana palm. Yours is not banana palm, but originally banana palm leaves. Is that correct? Yeah, so originally the concept started from banana leaves, and that still happens okay. if you go to the southern part of India. They are, what I like about the southern part of India is they are more organic, they're more natural. They try to use natural resources, and that is what fascinates me, that if they can do it, think about the power that lies with millions of people doing this together. So that is still happening in the weddings, especially in the South Indian weddings. Uh, people do use uh, banana leaves, but again... This is not possible doing with banana leaves because they are better for cooking. Like, so if you see uh, Bahamas, if you see Jamaican, if you see Puerto Ricans, they all cook in, or Hawaii, they all cook in banana leaves. So the concept of cooking in banana leaves is still there. They still do it because the food, of course, tastes better and it keeps all the juices in. And so that's where the banana leaves come from. But if you have to curate them into these tableware, which is sturdy, talk about the sturdiness or talk about how leak-proof they are, how can they, how can they hold hot and cold uh, liquids in them? In that case, the palm leaves are a better option. Why? Because you're not, you're not depleting the natural resources. You're just picking up whatever falls from the tree. So... The way it is, a, is, it's a cottage industry back in India, and there are palm farms that are designed that is just for this purpose of making these tableware. So they are nurtured, and they are, um, the farms are actually just for this purpose. So you're not depleting any natural resources, because that would mean it's the end. The palm trees are dying. No because the trees are not touched. It's just the leaves that are picked after the sunrise. Wow. that's It's such a different approach to what I would consider farming. And we've had some guests on the show that are farmers that do have more sustainable ways of um, growing vegetables and raising livestock and things like that. There, there, are, there are always better ways to do things. But I would find it hard to believe that there is a better process than what you're doing with the fact that it's not like people have to scale the trees or harvest the leaves. They really just wait until they come down on their own. These palm forests, essentially, what would you call a, a, a large cluster of palms? Is it called a forest or is uh, it called, it's called something a farm. else? It's, a, it's called a palm farm. So again, these are, not the, farm. Okay. Yeah, these are not the palm trees you would actually see in a regular beach. That is a different palm tree. This is a variety of a palm tree, which is called a oreca palm nut, palm tree. Or another another word would be betel nut. Uh, so, so they are a little different. They are more bigger. Their leaves are as big as you. So you'll be surprised how big the leaves can get when they dry. And uh, that's the beauty, yeah. Oh, cool. How many, this, is, this might be a, a weird question because I'm sure the, the leaves vary in size too. But you said this leaf is like as big as me. And I'm 5'7", so I'm a pretty average height for a U.S. female, I think. Um, how many plates do you get out of one leaf? Are these, these are pressed or kind of stamped out, I assume? Yes. Yeah, so let's say we can get as big as a six-feet leaf and as wide as at least uh, four feet uh, in width. So what they do is they take the whole leaf, and the best part to make these tableware are the center portions of the leaves. Why? Because they are more sturdier. They're more thicker versus the edges. They are more thin, and they are, they are rough. They would bend down. So the best part is the... The cream is the center of the sheep. They call it sheep. Sheep means a very big leaf, a heavy, thick leaf. And so sometimes, depending on the thickness, it could be one sheep that, is, that does the work. Sometimes it could be two sheep that have to be combined together for the thickness to giving them that thickness. So they're taken and then they're hot compressed in a machine to give them the desired shape. So, for example, you need round. So you put the leaf and you put the machine on top of it. So it's basically like stamping. So you keep hot compressing and stamping and it cuts it into that. It takes that. Uh, shape and then you cut it and then you trim it and that's how they made hmm. and each each design that you have I would assume takes a different a different mold or a different stamp how many designs are you working with right now so right now I have 50 different kinds of plates and bowls five zero fifty. <laughs> oh my goodness yes. wow and we love uh the feedback we get from people it's like we have from a two inch the smallest is a two inch bowl and it's like a perfect cupcake slash dipping bowl to a big a turkey platter so we have a platter that fits in a huge turkey 
So we have, and in the middle, we have this huge variety uh, range of products in the middle. But the funny thing is, two years ago, when I started Detox, I literally had four products, which was four plates. I never even imagined or had the vision that I would expand to bold and further more platters. And now to go containers, that's what I'm designing with the lids. So that's an upcoming project for us. But uh, yeah, so all my social media, the name that you would even see today is Detox Plates, because we started with the vision of just plates in mind. So one word, detox plates, is our handle for almost all of our social media because of that reason. But but, but we, it's just not plates. We also offer bowls and platters and trays. Sure. And I was seeing um, you, you have different combination sets too. Like if someone, you, I think it was even entitled a sample set. If someone wanted to see and touch these bowls and these plates if, if they were thinking about having an event or just stocking these instead of you know I feel like every family has a you know a plastic container of plastic plates or paper plates just in case you know maybe we're not gathering as much right now as we're still kind of in pandemic mode but if they wanted to stock that standard for when they do have friends over what does that sample look like? How, ma how many things do they get in that sample package? Sure. So there are two things. One is our sample pack, which is if you go to our website, detox.com, we offer a free sample pack, and that includes eight to ten samples anywhere, like four bowls, four plates, a um, good assortment of these two. And uh, so that's one thing, and people can only get the sample pack on the website. So that is the reason why people say, why can we not buy from Amazon or Etsy or other platforms? So the first reason is because we offer these free samples for, fe for people who are not sure. Like, okay, palm, leaf, a tableware, we're not sure how it is or what it is. We want to see it. We want to experience it. And, and a lot of our customers like private chefs or private charcuterie board owners, they actually order the sample packs because they make these amazing charcuterie boards, the cheese boards. So they like experimenting with our samples. So that's the first option. And the second one is if you're actually sure of you've seen these products before and you want to stock up on, let's say you say a minimum quantity for a small get together of another family with you or for just yourself when you want to take a break from the dishes or when you really want to host, the smallest packaging we offer is a count of 25. So the smallest pack on any shape, any variety, it is a pack of 25. So 25 plates will last you, I mean, me personally, I reuse them. So for me, they would last a long time because I completely reuse my plates and bowls for at least 10 to 15 times easily, hand wash only though. Sure, of course. I don't, I don't imagine they would. I, I imagine they are sturdy and would last through most typical circumstances, but putting them in the dishwasher is probably not advised. In the dishwasher no. or soaking them. <laughs> no, but, not but so much. you can hand wash them. You can put them in the microwave. So my girls take a lot of time to eat and their food gets really freezing cold. And I tell them next time, I'm going to put it in the fridge and I'm going to take it out and just give it to you without warming it up. So there's a point, right? But they love putting the food on it and microwaving it again and again so that works for us and then um yeah and then when they're done uh, eating they also hand wash and uh, they are happy washing the dishes so i'm like okay done good girls good <laughs> girls oh nice oh and it's nice that they get to eat off of something and be a part of you know the family business too this is this is you are a mompreneur as you said this is mom's project and they get to see you working and doing this and they also get to eat off of the fruits for the palm leaves the fruits of your labor um and see things that I, i'm assuming they get really excited when they get to see a picture of themselves on social media or on your website or updates like that yes have they gotten recognized in public oh you're the you're the detox plates girls yet yes so actually <laughs> they are we are called the detox family i'm the detox lady and they're the detox kids so we all have that tagline and I think they like I told you in the beginning they are ready to be on a podcast they can talk more passionately than me and they will give you real examples they will be so happy to display so they've used the plates reused after a couple of times they've reused them as canvases so they've drawn on them oh. painted on them they put their Legos on them they use them as displays trays so Kids, kids learn a lot by watching you because I, I use the trays to sometimes store my jewelry on them. So it's like it's like a jewelry tray. Why not, right? So um, that's how they learn a lot of things. And my, I remember when I was a child, my mom used to say that children are like monkeys. Monkey see, monkey do. And just the most important thing is to, the best way to make these lessons stick is to teach them by example. 
and they just uh, look and then they learn a lot. Sure. So that when they see mom saving the world one compostable plate at a time, they're going to go and do something just like that, hopefully in the future. At least carry on, (laughs) carry on the detox family business. (laughs) I feel feel to be a responsible parent and pass on this legacy uh, to my kids because it's these little actions that they see you do uh, every day that will make sure that the sustainability sticks around. Otherwise, it's so easy to divert from your habits, right? Oh, sure. So. So what is something that you do to get them out into the nature that you live in? You're out in Oregon, and I will admit I have not been. I have seen beautiful landscapes with trees and mountains. I, Oregon, you get to have both. There's that questions, do you like mountains or do you like ocean? And you get to have a little bit of both out there, and I'm really jealous because I'm currently stuck in the Midwest and there's still snow. But it's it's like 40 degrees today, so I'm really excited. But how do you choose to get them out in nature? What is your favorite activity outside as a family? Thank you. And you put beautiful, uh, Oregon in a very beautiful way. Yes, it's a great <laughs> mix of both the ocean and the mountain with snows and not without the snow. So when I moved here from Ohio five years ago, that was my main criteria. Okay, beach check, mountains check, and close to Hawaii check. So <laughs> that's why we moved here. And once we came here, we realized how big it is in the environmental cause. Like everybody in Oregon are so eco-conscious, they're big on recycling, not that that I thought I would recycle, but because everybody does it, it's such a fun thing to do because everybody's into it, and that motivates you, and this is the best place I would have ever imagined uh, if I was starting detox anywhere else in USA. I think this is one of the best places because there are zero-way shops here around downtown. You can go and get your put, take your container minimize the plastic in your house and minimize even wastage like just fill up what you really need and go back there so kids do all these activities with me so when you say what we do for the nature which is Oregon is so big on camping so big on picnics outside like there are I've never seen these many RV campgrounds as I've seen in Oregon and we've been thinking about getting a camper next year because I was like I want to travel I want to be close to nature I want to live minimally when I can spend Three months in Hawaii for in a one bedroom, I can give up this three thousand square foot. Really, I don't need it. I, I I realize that, and I'm okay. I'm 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 ready for a camper. So what we do is we have a, we have a good backyard here in Oregon, and we have a twenty foot garden which we created for the girls. So the girls every year we plant our own veggies. We really love doing our own produce. So the girls get their hands dirty in the mud. They love gardening. So they helped me out with that. And when they pluck the tomatoes, ask them. The happiness I see in their face, like each tomato. And the best is they don't waste it because it's something that they've done. So they, they hate wasting any tomato out of there. And they go and they collect mint from their tomatoes, from their any veggies that they want to eat. So it's like they own it. And when they own that feeling, it's, it's just rewarding. So that's something we do at home to be closer to nature. And again, when we go on picnics, we have this picnic uh, kit in our car which of course has our detox plates and bowls so we keep them in our car every time because I am a creative mom I can come out of content anytime even when I'm driving so sometimes sometimes it's been that funny that my husband is driving and I'm like the kids girls want strawberries I would wash them in the plate give them in the plate and also do pictures for my content like this is real life this is practical I'm a mompreneur means I deal with this every day so that's how we try to incorporate these during the in the campgrounds because you can literally toss them after you're done. They comp, they would comp, decompose on their own. Plus, sometimes we also put them in the fire pit because they are just safe. So that's zero waste, and that's what we love about it. It's a good point that you made earlier on in the episode too that these are true backyard compostable you don't even need a compost bin for something like that it is a leaf it is a different leaf that falls off of our trees here in the midwest uh and in oregon but it's just going to decompose just like you know i would i'm I'm picturing my mother's hosta plants because they have beautiful lush leaves and when they die they, they turn yellow they shrivel up and then they go back into the ground that is that's just like the most perfect compostable situation because the the difficulty with compost theoretically in, in, in actuality it is better than having plastic it is better than having something that is not going to break down but there are certain types of 
compostable I, uh, compostable ratings. I'm not sure of the rating scale off the top of my head, but this doesn't even need a rating. It's a leaf. It's going to decompose naturally. What did you say? Four to six weeks? Yes, four to six weeks. And the best is I have done it in my pot. Like if you live in New York City, if you live in Canada, I understand people don't have backyards. I get it. But everybody has house plants. People love plants, right? So once, even if you have a big pot, put it in there and it will go back and become soil. It becomes brown and it becomes just mud. Hmm. That, yeah, this is, there, there are not many things that are just perfect. And I feel like this is just, this is a perfect thing. It is, packaging is always a thing, you know, where it's, it's compostable, it's biodegradable to, to varying degrees. But now you, now you need to figure out a way to, well, wait, you said you, did you, did you hint, is this public knowledge or can it be public knowledge yet? You said you're working on to-go containers. I am. Yes. Yes. So yes. that is a new upcoming project. So the challenge with them is the depth. So the leaves can only be given a certain amount of that. Beyond that, they either start tearing. It's like the threshold. You are getting to that threshold where it's like you don't want to push it further down. So if we, so, so what we're trying to do right now are some of our current plates and bowls, we already have a great depth. We're designing just a lid that when you're done with the dish, for example, for our, some of our restaurant uh, and catering companies, where you put the food on, you can literally just use a lid to cover it up and put it back in the refrigerator or take it with you when you're done eating. So you don't have to put it in another PLA plastic box or another uh, paper material where it's all leaching and it's mixing with uh, the paper products in there. So you're coming up with the lids that can just go onto our existing uh, inventory and it's easy peasy after that, yes. Wonderful. That makes it more multi-purpose too. There's yes. more options. So let's say someone could order just the bowls or they could order the bowls and the lids if they think they're going to use them, but if they don't need them, you're still creating, uh, for lack of better word, after working in the health food store, a, a skew. You have one skew, one item. Yes. And then you just have to create something to go with it. You're not reinventing the wheel and creating an entirely different product that's basically the same, but it has to has an extra lip for yeah. the lid or and, something like that. And it kills me when I go to Costco and I see these uh, plastic cling wraps. Oh, my God. They last you forever. I get it. But I've switched to bee wraps. Now we do bee wraps around our food. And that's where I was like, I don't, I really need lids. For, because what's the purpose? Because you're storing it in these. But if you're putting the plastic wraps around it, the cling wraps, then it, it again, makes it touch the plastic, the food, and it's being stored for I don't know how much time in the refrigerator, and it's taking all the toxins from it and getting into the food. So that beats the purpose. So why not design a lid as well? So that's our upcoming project, yeah. Hmm. And I know some folks, I am on board with beeswax, especially when it's replacing something else too. I know some folks do not always use, they don't always want to use the beeswax sheets if they are vegan because it does come from uh, bees, of course, <laughs> beeswax come from, comes from bees typically. So you're also creating a substitute for that as well in general, just not having to have an additional disposable wrap. Yes. This is just such a cool thing. I'm just, I'm very excited. This is just, thank it's, you. It's thank so much you. fun. <laughs> yeah. And, and we also, also thought about two more things. Again, one is gluten free. So how people are allergic to gluten. So with these, they have the natural gluten, which is from a leaf. So plants have their own gluten. People are not allergic to that. So we make sure these are gluten-free for people who have gluten allergies because a lot of people eat the food on, right? So we made sure of that as well. And then another one was for the Jewish community. They do Sabbath every Sunday and they don't cook. So they serve food on these when it's like a bigger uh, amount of people there. And they are kosher certified. So our products, they are kosher compliant, which means they don't have to worry about the kosher in the, <clears throat> in the plants. There's so many things to think about. That you just, I, I, until you're, I suppose, running a business around it, you just don't, you don't have to think about these things, so you don't. Just like when I was a little kid growing up, my mom had a vegetable garden, she had a flower garden. I will say I didn't have as much of an interest in it as your girls seem to, but I always at least knew where my food came from. But just having that knowledge from the get-go, instead of having to discover it later, they already have such a connection to to food and the whole process. It's it's a lot easier to grow up knowing something and just remember it than to unlearn and relearn it when you're 
an adult or trying to be an adult as I am. <laughs> yeah, and again, they, they they never they never had a passion for gardening. It just developed with time when they saw me do it and when I involved them. It's the same way. I never thought I would be a businesswoman, but I want to have that entrepreneurial mindset for them from right on at this age so that tomorrow, if even if they have an idea, because for me, it, it's an idea. It's about an idea. If you have an idea, you can fulfill it. You can take it to another level by designing the right situation around it. So that's what I want to motivate them for. Maybe tomorrow they'll be more innovative in this field or maybe something else. So why not? So it's about these developing these eco-subconscious habits, which will eventually happen by doing, by putting in an effort. And that's what I believe in. I don't say it has to be 100%. Plants die. Like some of our seeds don't even bloom. And my kids are like, what happened? I'm like, I don't know, but at least you did it. You know, you get better at it every time. You do it. So, so that is the reason why I encourage them to do it themselves and experience it. It's such a wonderful thing to learn by your example, myself included, <laughs> not just your girls. <laughs> so what are some more things that you incorporate around the house as you're leading by example with your business and with the way you grow your own produce, how you take your girls out in nature? What are some things you do inside? You mentioned the beeswax wrapping. Any additional tips that you have that yes, not yes. only your little girls, but we can learn from too. <laughs> yeah, it takes it from you, and then the kids, of course, learn from you. So we, so I remember. So when I was a kid, I went to a Catholic convent school, and you know how the convent schools are—they're very disciplined, they're very routine. And I think where my habits were instilled is my school. If I didn't go to that Catholic convent school, I don't know if I would be like this today. Uh, my husband calls me type A, but I could just call it good habits, <laughs> which is starting from like my sheets, making my bed. I like that because I like to be uncluttered and organized from right on from the morning because that's what makes me more effective and makes me, keeps me on the track going. So that's what we start with, making our bed first and then going and when we're brushing right in the middle, conserving water. We don't need to keep the tap on all the time. So doing that and then unplugging our devices or plugging them when we need to because that's conserving uh, electricity. And then because I make three meals in a day, not that I'm a great chef, but it's just, again, a habit of being so routine to it. And my kids love food. My husband loves food. We use a lot of our uh, glass jars for, like, sauces. We upcycle them. So we put a lot of gifts in those. We turn them into candles. We turn them into LED lights. We turn them into... Uh, gift giving so we put a lot of um, cookies even in the pantry we've upcycled our pantry with all of these glass jars with that we've reused so my girls see that, that as well and instead of using ziplocs they would use these jars to to store their clay their uh, legos so that's like eliminating plastics in your life as much as you can so it's like one step at a time of course and, of course, at the end, we use the detox table where, like I told you, we do 30-day challenges at home. And we try to see how much we can use one plate or one bowl. Uh, of course, one thing you have to be careful is you have to wash, but you have to dry them very properly because you don't want to be dealing with mold. So if you live in a damp place where there's no sunlight, I would not suggest you uh, washing and reusing them. But if, like, I have, like, sunlight all throughout my day uh, here in Oregon. So everything dries so quickly and fast. So... The plates go in the drying rack, and then they dry within some few hours. So, we, so that's why we use them because you have to be really careful of not having mold in your wet dishes. Yes, oh for sure. I think I read a review on your website that said someone had used them for taco night. Even and they washed up just fine. They held the, the weight of the tacos, and maybe there was like a little sauce discoloration or something like that. But she said she was able to reuse it. That's another nice thing about these is that I, I don't know. Perhaps some people wash their paper plates. You know, if if you're gonna if you're gonna well, first of all, use detox. <laughs> but you know, there there are varying degrees of disposable tableware out there, of course, but. You know, I suppose, I guess, I guess you could wash a plastic plate. You know, you could do that. Paper is going to disintegrate pretty quickly, I would assume. And also, like you said, of course, the plastic is not going to break down like paper or detox leaves right. would. Right. But the paper plate also has that, um, that, flimsy I don't know what I want to call it. The flimsy part. If you put liquid in it, it's going to it's going to drop yes. or it's going to leak. It's going to uh, soak through it. And, of course, the food leaches in paper products. So that is the biggest problem. It leaches in the paper and all the chemicals from that get into your food. 
And again, for paper, you're cutting down the tree. So think about it. How many trees are being touched versus palm leaves? You're not touching the tree. Bamboo, you're cutting the tree. So that's the whole point. So I, I think it, people, it if you have... There. You're not killing anything. Yeah, if you have styrofoam, if you have plastic, whatever you have, just use everything and get done. And then when you're restocking, go for a better alternative, whatever it feels right in your budget, whatever works for you, do that. Because I get it. Not a lot of people can just become eco-conscious. It takes time. It is when you're awakening. It's like, why do I need to do this? Why am I doing this? So it's that inner connection that you need to feel. Uh, that's, that's when it happens. And that, that's when you make your choices. And with every choice, you have the option to make it right and make a difference. That's, that's what I tell people. Exactly. One step at a time. Yeah. So you said growing up in the school that you did and in the community and the family that you did, this appreciation of nature was instilled at a very young age. When would you say, when was your turning point of, oh my gosh, I have to do something about this? Or this is what my friends and family are eating off of. Why can't I bring that here? You said the that detox plates has been in business for about two years, but when? What was the catalytic moment? It was definitely when I became a parent, because before that it was myself, and I was like, "It's okay, just flat. it's it's just some chemicals. I'm fine. I'll, I'll survive." But when you have your children, you just start thinking more, and the bigger effect is when they start learning from you. Where your example, like I said, when you're leading by example, when they're watching you, then you get conscious. Okay. So am I throwing it in the right bin? Like today they tell me, this needs to go here. Mommy, take that out of the trash, put it in the recycle. And they would do it. That's what is, <laughs> so definitely was after I became a parent. And I was like, there's so much of plastics around us. There's, like we went, we went to a beach one day, we went snorkeling. And my daughter found this huge plastic container inside when we were snorkeling. And she was upset about it. So when that happened, it was an eye-awakening thing for me that, okay, this is serious. This is a serious problem. I mean, in the beginning, we all know that's the thing. Sometimes we all know that these things cause harm to the environment. These things cause harm to our lives. But do we do anything about it? No. And that's where I was motivated because of my daughters. I was like, I need to create a better tomorrow for them. And that does not, that will not happen if I don't do anything today about it. And like I said, being in Oregon really inspired me because everybody here does so much and it was easy to take up something new to recycle more if you see our trash it's like one bag versus if you see a recycle it's like five bags so of course i would i could have put everything in trash and be done i'm like no i don't want to put in that effort but no why because they're learning and tomorrow they'll be even doing this better than me but when you said that they said no 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 mom you can't put it in that bin i'm picturing these two adorable children trying to correct you and i just it <laughs> It, it brings a smile to my face. I'm laughing. And to to imagine one of your daughter's facial expressions at the heartbreak of finding this big plastic thing in the water that she's swimming in, that's the thing. Exactly what you said where, you know, perhaps when, when we were growing up, this was just a part of life. It was unfortunate. We saw a cigarette on the ground. We saw we were using styrofoam cups in school because we didn't realize how awful styrofoam was yet. It, uh, we're, we're slowly learning that we have to unlearn all of these convenient, cheap products. And now we know the detriment that they have to the environment and to our enjoyment of it. That's the biggest thing for your daughter to see that and go, oh, no, that's so not okay. She knows that, and she knows it's not okay, and she's, she's, I can imagine she probably put it somewhere. I'm, I, I'm imagining you guys might have taken it with you and disposed of it, because she's, she's not going to stand for that, and I think that's really a big difference between, you know, maybe my generation and the ones behind me was, I feel, you know, like, I think I've said this before, maybe in this episode, even I'm 31, mm -hmm. I'm pretty standard, slightly older millennial, that I, th I want to say it started to change around when I was a child, when I was in junior high and high school, the reusable bottles, not using straws. This is now more than a movement. It's turning into the new way of life. And yeah. when you have kids like yours that are going to know this is no, this is the normal. This should be the normal. That's not normal. That's not OK. That's when real change is going to happen, when it's a whole new generation that's like, mm -mm, nope. And I think, and I think two more points are this awareness that has come today to them. It's because 
first because we've educated ourselves as parents and we've made sure we teach them about it. So first is the awareness part. People lack the awareness. People don't want to think about it or some people who think might not have the means to execute it. So I get it. So sometimes it's lack of awareness. And second of all is some in the past, they didn't have that alternative there didn't exist these metallic straws at that time in our time. There were no options. People never, nobody thought about it. So that was a better, that was the best we could do, which was just keep reusing what we have. I don't know if you guys cheered that or not, but in our household, we used to wash them and reuse them all the time. We never bought a new packet, but that is the, that is the best we could do at that time, like my parents. Uh, but we did use plastic straws because there was no other alternative. So a mix of, um, no alternatives being at that time and combination with awareness for the products that came and evolved with time. So I think because we have that now, the kids are much more conscious and aware. The the awareness, yeah, just is exactly like you said, the awareness is the most important part. And we have a generation that's coming up behind us that is already aware. They don't have to be made aware. And yeah, they have options. They and have glasses and metallic straws. <laughs> and blame it, seriously. Blame it on really Reels and TikTok because my girls watch these videos. And the best part is they just ordered themselves like a bunch of bamboo brushes and they were reading every part of the packaging saying it's compostable and it made sense to them and just like adults. And I felt, oh my God, look at that. So nicely done. Yeah, yeah. Good job, girls. What age did you say they are? Eight and a half and six and a half. Oh, girls. <laughs> yes. Yes. Start so they're going young. in the right direction. <laughs> I love it. I'm proud. I'm not even their parent, and I'm super proud of them. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So I would assume that since food and, of course, the plates and the bowls and the tableware are such a big staple in your house, cooking mm-hmm. also is. You and you said I don't know how good of a cook I am, but um, I'm gonna assume that you're a pretty decent cook. Three meals a day. Yes. So, what is your your personal favorite food to eat? And then, if that's not shared with your family, what's your favorite food to make for everybody? So that is a very no brainer question because, like I told you, I miss the Indian street food. So, growing up in India. I really cannot replicate that street food. And second, because it used to be served on these very raw-looking plates and bowls. And that just makes the food even better. And that smell of the leaves and the whole uh, thing. So that's something I love to eat, the Indian street food. And I really miss it because what you get, it, it's very authentic when you actually go there and eat it versus trying to get it at a as restaurant. It's close enough, but it's still not as good as uh, when you actually go there. So anybody traveling to India, the first t- thing I tell people that, okay, don't drink water over there. It's not very safe. But eat food, you can eat it, especially the street food. It's so damn good, and I miss it a lot. Mm. I love it. I miss, I miss traveling. I miss having the street food everywhere. I have not been to India. It is definitely on my list. Uh, a friend of mine, Yogini, is from Maharashtra, and she has invited me to come and to stay with her family at some point in time, and I'm going to do it. Yogini, I'm going to do it. She just had a beautiful baby at oh. the beginning of January, so I don't think we're doing that anytime soon. But just hearing her stories and seeing pictures and just having the food that she has made for me before, it's ugh. I mean, I, I, I am a multi-cuisine person. I love all the cuisines, and I love traveling, like you said, and my our favorite thing is trying different food experiences. We love different cultures and the spices and the taste, and that's when we figure out what we like, what, what we don't like, sort of. So I like, I like, I like to do that, that experiment. So, yeah, we love different cultures, different foods from around the world as well. Now, do your girls share your love of all of the foods as well yes or that is a big their, their win head. no they are they eat every damn thing like my husband love does because okay. <laughs> it's different so my mother mother <laughs> so uh, they yeah they she, he's picky but my kids eat everything and that's a big win for me my kids eat everything and they love even trying different cuisines and different things so they are very open to it and yeah that's been a good um Good thing for us, yes. Oh, good girls. I almost, I almost wonder if it's the appreciation and the knowledge that they have about their food. I've always kind of wondered this. What makes a picky eater? 
and Matt, my fiance, was a picky eater at one point. He still kind of is, but he had some he had some vegan roommates in college that kind of broke him of that, and he started trying new and different things. But it was it was definitely kind of like a corn, steak, and potatoes upbringing in Iowa sort of situation for both of us. My family was a little bit a little bit adventurous with their food, but not much when I started until I started to travel. But there were. You know, I don't know. I don't know how someone doesn't like a vegetable, but that's just me. I've never had an issue with vegetables. I used to ask for lima beans when I was sick because I loved them. But I don't know. I have to wonder if the appreciation of food might go back to their appreciation of gardening. That could be, like I told you, because when they own gardening, when they own their own produce, they love it even much more. But I think for me, I'm going to say it's the parents. Because I eat everything. Any cuisine, I'll eat it. No tantrum. Because I'm open to trying it. Though I might not like it, and I might decide second time I wouldn't eat it. But at least I, I, I eat everything. And that's what my girls have seen, that mom eat, eats everything. So I make them eat with me since they were like, literally babies. And that's, that's what happens. They develop the taste for it because they've been eating it. Sure. Now... We're going to go back to kind of the business talk of things. I love getting to know you and I love getting to know your story. That's, you know, it's my favorite thing to have guests on, but also to not just talk about the innovation that they're bringing to the world, but also just who you are as a person because they're, you, you, everyone is a person behind their product, behind their brand. You have your family, you have your girls, and I think it really shows your your inspiration for what you do. This is your why. It's for your kids. It's for getting back to nature and to create a better world for them. But with with business, with entrepreneurship, mompreneurship, comes challenges, comes goals, comes excitement. Okay. And I want to talk a little bit, or have you talk a little bit, about your experience with two things you got to interview to perhaps be on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Which we, is kind of a big deal. <laughs> it is, and uh, we're still incomplete over there. We still have to audition next year again because we could not make it to the final round. Okay, got you. So we're going to watch for you again on Shark Tank is what you're telling me. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And you were the winner of the Nexty, one of the Nexty Awards at the Natural Food Expo. Yes. What was that for? I'm assuming the plates and bowls. But so, <laughs> yeah. So, like again, I told you, what we do at Detox is we aim for really good quality products. I pay a premium on the quality of my products because uh, that's the reason. What makes me different from a wholesaler or a manufacturer? So there are these companies that would just manufacture these and sell them or wholesale them. So what makes me different is I'm a mom who's trying to manufacture these and go up to all the way to the supply chain. So I'm doing everything in the middle. And we, we try to make sure the quality is uh, not compromised. And because of that reason, we got the Next Tea Awards at the 2019 National Food Expo for being the most innovative, sustainable product of the year. And because of that, we were called on to Shark Tank. And they were like, we want to audition you because you, your products are great. Your quality is so great. So... This is also a personal review I have gotten. So like I told you, there are other companies like mine, like my products. What makes me different is, again, I'm a mom who's trying to build a whole chain myself. So that is a big deal for me. And second is the quality of my products. If you see, uh, the reviews have been the, if you compare the five, six company products that are like mine, our quality will stand out. That is my guarantee. Nicely done. And I would assume partially because you do have a hand in the entire process too. Yes. You are making sure every step of the way your people are being taken care of, your product is being taken care of, and the end result is always going to end up superior. I find when that's the case, instead of just cherry picking, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this now, give me my product. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, right now it's like, if, if, if you see these companies, if they're just here solely for making money or making profits, I'm not sure how they're going to survive. But when you have an, when you have a why or when you have a cause or when you make noise and you're like, I want to make an impact, that is where you stand out. That is your personality. That is how authentic you are. And that is what I'm trying to do here. Be different from others by making a noise saying that I want to do this in a bigger way. And that's why I want trucks with me. That's why I want more people doing this with me. Think about it like having a handful of people doing this versus 
millions of people doing this with me imperfectly. That's what I want here. Sure. Imperfectly. That's the best words. Yes. And 100% just doing things a little bit better, even if they're not perfect. Exactly. Everyone doing more. Yes. Yes. Not, not just a handful perfectly. No, because that's not going to bring the impact, the ripple effect. It has to be millions of people. Like think about it. Milan said, it's just one paper plate or it's just one plastic straw. Think about that impact that's going to be created. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's a collective uh, change that we talked about here. Yeah. Just like you said with community, you know, this is, this is focused on community to not only your families, not only your workers and those that you employ and work with. Like you said, you're like, this is your company too. This is the community effort. But it's also all of us doing our part because yes one person three people you know 10 people can do things absolutely perfectly but it's going to be so much better if we got a couple hundred doing it imperfectly but doing what they can because everyone is going to have their option or their preferred method of upping their game not everyone's going to look different um i think i've been on i've been on a couple of uh, the the non-plastic baggies train i actually had to whew, this is a tangent i had to take my cat to the vet the other day and they asked for a poop sample and i said i don't have a plastic bag <laughs> which is a great problem to have i'm like look i did it we don't have plastic bags in the house anymore oh my god uh i didn't end up taking one because he didn't feel like going to the bathroom that morning but yeah you just you slowly you make these efforts and then you find yourself needing hmm, a plastic bag and you don't have one which was kind of exciting well, that's, so. a, that's a great problem to have right it's <laughs> a really good problem to have i guess thanks yeah. yes my cat's fine by the way it that's, was just routine but that's great. that's great and i believe doing is so powerful because when you start doing these things imperfectly what you're doing is you're putting it into action it's like conscious consumerism and it's like you're doing and you get perfect at it in some time so everything takes time and doing is powerful so if you are doing it Either imperfectly, it's okay because one day you'll become perfect at it by just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. That's the key. Just by habit, just routine, really, really by accident, even with intention, but accident at the end. Yes. Love yes. it. Yeah. Oh, so great. Do you have any other words of wisdom or recommendation for folks that are trying to be more sustainable? Not that we just didn't say that, you know, in the past three minutes or so, one little thing at a time. Or perhaps any other entrepreneurs or moms or mompreneurs that are trying to convey this to their kids or trying to get a business off the ground while in the midst of motherhood. So again, yes, as parents, in order to sustainably to stick around, you have to lead by example. And you first have to start from yourself. You have to be the change. You cannot bring a change if you can't be the change. So... Uh, and to bring that change, I say doing is powerful again. That is my mantra. It's like if you are conscious and if you're making these choices every day, you have the power to bring a change. And it, that is by changing yourself first. And then a lot of people say, oh, I never thought about it. Oh, I haven't done it. It's okay. The first best time to make those changes, to make that effort to do something about it is gone. But the second best time is now to so do something about it. I love that. That's beautiful. You, uh, your light just shines through my computer screen in your cheeks, in your smile, in your words. Oh, I'm blushing. Love it. <laughs> yeah, like, when I can do it, and I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a procrastinator. I anticipate a lot, but if I can do it, anybody can. It's just a matter of starting something and then see how passionate you can become about it. Do the thing, guys. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Now, you said that, so things like the sample pack mm -hmm. is only available on detox plates. Oh, sorry, pardon, detox. Detox.com, that is a website, correct. And then where else can people find your tableware? So people can find detox palm leaf tableware on Amazon, on walmart.com, on wayfair.com, and on Etsy. So these are a couple of channels. Again, the best way is website. Why? Because, again, I told you there are programs like people can use affiliate links through websites, which means I don't do this myself alone. I have hundreds of helping hands who advocate and help me raise awareness so people can use their affiliate links not only to earn commissions but also to spread awareness 100 times faster than just being me. And the second one, of course, is because we have the sample pack. And the third one is we offer free shipping on any order across USA. And there's also a coupon code that people can apply for discount on the website. 
Wonderful. And if folks want to become an affiliate to help you get that message across, is there an application form on your website to detox.com? Yes. If you go to detox on one of the tabs, it pulls up affiliate and that's what people need to click. And once they click it, it's just simple. Register here. There's no charge. And every uh, month people get paid off according to the traffic they bring. They start with 10% and then they can go up to 30% with the commissions with the company. Wonderful. Affiliate marketing is really starting to be a big deal too. And at first I wasn't sure how I felt about it, but I really enjoy it. it. It's more people getting passionate about things that are already there. It really is more about amplifying voices than anything else. And you find something you believe in, you go and share it. And I, I honestly think it's a really great way to put more information out there and in front of more different types of people too. So I love that you're on a varied... Um, array of sites too. I always personally like going straight to a company because I know that's usually more beneficial for that company, but also getting to be on bigger players like Walmart and Amazon. You know, one one could argue that Amazon and Walmart aren't necessarily the most ethical places to shop. However, the fact that you can now find ethical and sustainable things at Walmart and Amazon makes me happy <laughs> because <laughs> that you. means this is picking up steam and that bigger suppliers are starting to pick them up. Yeah. And that's it it starts with the little guy. But when the big guys get in, start getting on board too, everyone else starts to follow suit. Yes, and that's what the whole ripple effect comes from. It's like the bigger and that's why we aim that first our products are experienced by resorts or by restaurants because those are bigger markets when people see these everywhere then they will be like why can i not have it in my household so that's where it starts from a bigger platform to then individual households so there's there's so much a potential market that's what i tell people in your weddings in your events like a first birthday to a bridal shower wherever there's food on the table you can plan it on these for sure now, I see your girls have just joined behind you. Yes. Would they like to end the episode with us? Yes, why not? Come here, girls. So these are our brand ambassadors, Detox Kids. Say hello. Hello, hello. And it's so nice to meet you. Well, they can't hear you because I have the earphones. They cannot. You're in the earphones. That's very true. <laughs> well, nice to meet you, but we can have you on the speaker. There you go. Turn off my earphones. There you go. Hi, guys. How we doing? <laughs> now you guys want to wave hi? Hi. Hi. Hello there. So you guys are mom's biggest helpers and biggest supporters from what I hear. Is that true? Yes. Yes. What is your favorite thing to eat off of the detox plates? What's your favorite thing to eat, it? Cupcakes and sushi. Cupcakes and sushi. That sounds good to me. How about you, sweetheart? Do you have a favorite? Have a favorite thing to eat on it? Sushi. And what else? What else can you think? Donuts. And? <laughs> candy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a plate for a donut or a candy. Something else that you... Um, I like to eat um, um, chips. Chips on it, okay. The chips. I like to eat Do you like a sauce with your chips? Fruits on it. And then what happens with the fruits when you put it on them? Um, it stains the It plate. stains the plate. So what do we do with those plates then? So then we wash them. And if the stains don't go, what do we do? Compose. Compose them there in the fire pit. Or we throw it in the fire pit, yes. So which would you like better, throwing it in the fire pit or putting them in the garden? I like to... I don't know. I haven't tried okay. the, um, putting them in the garden. In the vegetable garden that you have? Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll put some today then. How about what? you that? Go put it in there. I'll give you some and you can put them in your vegetable garden. They're eco-friendly. Yeah. They are eco-friendly. And you guys are the most eco-friendly kids I think I've ever met, and even if have, I only got to meet you. have bamboo brushes. You do have bamboo brushes. Mom told me all about your new bamboo brushes. And you're able to recycle them or you're able to compost them when you're done with them? Yeah. What happens with Is the that packaging? Right? Did you read the packaging? You can compost the packaging. Yeah. You can compost the packaging. I think you guys are just so cool, and I think it's so fun that you get to do all of this with your mom, and you get to learn, and you guys are going to change the world. Do you know that? Thank you. Bye. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> what is it? What is a superpower? Flying and turning into a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> to a mermaid, okay. <laughs> you keep saving the mermaids, sweet pea. We're gonna save all the mermaids by getting all that plastic out and not yeah, using it, aren't we? Yeah. 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 You don't want the mermaid wrapped in plastic. Do you want a plastic tail? Would you like a plastic tail? Yeah. A plastic tail? Yeah. What would you like then? The tail I have. Okay. <laughs> the cloth. <laughs> no plastic tail. <laughs> okay. I love it. I want the palm leaf tail. Oh, she wants a palm leaf tail. Okay. There we go. Detox will be you expanding can, their can, line to mermaid tails. Or you can be a businesswoman and create mermaid palm leaf tails. That's can your business. Make it? Figured that out. I love it. It was so nice to meet you, my dear. Thank you so much for jumping on the end of mom's call. I'm Sorry, so excited. I'm crying a little bit. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, this is beautiful. If you feel like clipping <laughs> the ends, please feel free to for the video. Nah, we're not going to clip oh. this. The kids are important too. Oh, thank you. Oh, Pallavi, thank you so much for just being on and caring enough and believing in yourself and your kids and the future of everything enough to do this seeing your girls i'm getting emotional because it's so cool Thank you. so beautiful <laughs> yeah i have huge faith in myself and that's what i tell people when i believe in myself i can do it i can do anything so yes yeah thank you so much i appreciate your kind words and i thank you for your time today for doing this i'm super excited one thing i forgot was the Podfest uh, global summit did i tell you about it oh not yet not yet yes tell me so about the pod want, yes we're still also, recording too so it's happening it started yesterday so it's the pre uh, week right now so there's just online activity but the main event is march 1st through 3rd and that's when all of the guest speakers are presenting their case studies and there are these podcasts there are these free uh, things going on right now you can attend it if i've sent you the event right link uh, I, I think I might have. So just put in the coupon code detox and that'll give you free entry, free ticket. And you can share it in your audience. So uh, I don't know when you plan to air this, but if you plan to air this before the podfest, you can actually put uh, later on in your voice, you can actually just record that part that there's podfest global detox are speaking on it. And if people want to get their ticket for free, let them know of that coupon code. And that way they can, um, anybody can enjoy it. Awesome. So that's an unlimited coupon code. What was that? Detox? The coupon code is just the word detox. Perfect. DTS, yes, yes. I think this episode will be coming out after the PodFest, but I'm going to go ahead and make a post. Listeners, so if you didn't catch this already, there you go. Yeah. This will have already happened. Go ahead and check back for next year. Yes. But detox is going to get us entry into the pod fest which is the first weekend in march which is this upcoming weekend yeah, which so i I'm find so hard to believe so i <laughs> also if you want i have a five minute uh, guest speaker uh recording that they will do uh if you can attend it fine we'll have recordings so people can also watch sure those things yeah yeah wonderful but it's awesome. like it's like they made guinness world last year they had five thousand people and over zoom yeah on the event and this year they're hoping ten thousand Oh, cool. And uh, man. Yeah. So if you want to attend it, feel free. And I believe I sent like four easy steps, like open this, do this, do this. You can just use the exact same thing because it's very, um, the promo code option is very hard to find. It's actually on the very top and it's quite small. So a lot of people don't find it. So I've mentioned it. That's on the top. It's very hard to find. But if you have any I'll questions. I'll put through. Yeah, you a nice how-to for our listeners, too, so they can jump on board and get a little preview our, of our episode before it actually That's comes actually very out. smart. And you know what? You could do a fee follow feed up that what they had to think about it, the, this case study. or Because the, my, my case study is about being a mompreneur, like how you can blend mom life versus entrepreneur life. And that's what I'm speaking about. And this is exactly what I'm speaking about, how we blend everything, how we do gardening together, how we compost together. So that's what my lesson is for everybody that how I use my kids for my content, like how when they're eating, I would uh, take pictures of them and make it practical, like authentic people to people. It doesn't have to be a five star catering or a five star resort to do these. It could be a homeschooling mom with five kids at home. So that is what my topic is. And uh, uh, yeah, so 
I know a few friends that I will be sharing with that via text message once we're off here too, because I think they would be super excited to do that. I, I do not have my own kids. I do not personally intend to have my own children, but clearly I love children and I love seeing just bright stars that are just ready oh. to shine and they already are. And it's just, they're going to be, they're going to create big supernovas and change the world. I fully believe that. Sure, so. sure. I appreciate all your support and yes, let your friend circle know. And the more people attend, the better, because there are so many other free events happening on there and anybody could resonate with anything and find value in something. So that's awesome. what I would share with everybody. Cool. So cool. Oh, <laughs> I love this. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And listeners, again, you can find Detox Plates is the social media link for just about everywhere. We have TikTok. We have Instagram, we have the Facebook page, and then there's the affiliate links option. You also have your beautiful website. You can see pictures of the girls if you're not only already watching this, detox.com, and there is that free sample kit option on the detox website. Pallavi, thank you so much. I'm so glad we all got to meet your girls after hearing so much about them. So they are like my shadows. They follow me everywhere. It's been hard to get rid of them thanks to COVID pandemic because they're all the way more every time with me. So thank you for having all of us on the show. We are very excited to see the feedback from people. If people have any questions, they can feel free to add me on LinkedIn and get connected to me. I would love to answer any questions that they have for me. So thank you again for this opportunity. Perfect. You are so welcome.